Hello folks and welcome to another screencast on the EP for A-Level PE and this particular screencast is going to be discussing the training programs element of the EP. Now if you remember from the previous screencasts we've already discussed how to describe skills, tactics and fitness components both strengths and weaknesses for the performer that you've observed. If you've missed any of this go back to the previous screencasts that are on iSpeak PE. At this point, you'll then need to identify out of all of those weaknesses that you've already discussed, what was the biggest weakness in your opinion? Technically, there's no right or wrong answer, but the examiner may have a different opinion to you as to what the biggest weakness was, but this is fine because you just need to justify your choice of the weakness. The weakness must be, and I cannot stress this enough, one of the weaknesses you've already identified previously. So it must be one of the skills, tactics, or fitness component weaknesses. To justify it, you'll need to explain why that component that you've identified is a problem area for your performer and what would be the issues if it continued to be a problem area for your performer. So think physiologically, psychologically, and your knowledge of the game itself to apply it to that question. For example, if you said a netballer, netballer's biggest weakness was their shooting, you may say, well, the problem with this is if her shooting continues to be poor as it was, all of the hard work by the other teammates getting her the ball will mean that this is wasted. And... Therefore, the whole purpose of the shooter's position is to score points within the D and she wouldn't be able to function effectively within that team. So that would be from my game point knowledge. You might want to add some other things, like I said, physiologically and psychologically, and I can help you with this further within lessons. We're not going to discuss this now, but we can move this forward in other areas. After you've justified the biggest weakness, you then need to clearly explain well, how long do you want your program to last in order to create an improvement in the performer. And when we say how long, you need to discuss a number of weeks and how many sessions you want per week. The minimum time frame is eight weeks. And I would honestly say the minimum number of sessions is one session a week of at least 30 to 45 minutes per session. Once you've done that, you must justify why you have chosen those two aspects. Why have you only given eight weeks? Why can't you just do it in one week? Think physiologically what adaptations could occur after eight weeks to the performer that might be really useful. Think psychologically what would happen to the motor skill. Could we groove that skill? Could the skill be passed to the long-term memory? etc. So think of your psychological theory as well as your physiological theory. You also need to justify why you're only doing the number of sessions you are per week too. So for example, if you've got a decent standard performer, chances are you might only need one session a week. And realistically, I would justify that by saying, well, actually, this performer's at a good level of competition. I can tell that by the standard of the video or the observer, the practical that I've seen. And therefore, she must be like playing at least one competitive game per week, if not two, and training two to three times a week. So if I only just add one more session, this will prevent overload or burnout for my performer, as well as mental fatigue and physical fatigue for my performer. You must justify both of those aspects in order to gain the top marks for the EP. After this, you can start moving towards your development plan. So we start to discuss what method of testing you want to use. What we mean by this is how are you going to assure me that this is going to work? Your training program will work. And you can use any standardized method of testing, for example, 30 meter sprint or one rep max or sit and reach test. Or you can research and see what professional clubs or players would use or you could also invent a test. 
Now the trick is with inventing the test, if you do go down that road, you must be very specific as to your distances, the number of attempts they get, the time frame required, etc, etc. You need to be quite specific in explaining that test and that can take time. If you've got a preempted method of testing such as a 30 meter sprint test, the examiner will know what you mean by that and so that might save you time. But it's worth considering both because they might meet the needs of what you need to do. Once you've done that, you need to give me some clear aims or objectives of your training program. And the reason we do this after the method of testing is because that might link to the method of testing. So for example, you might uh, provide some sort of testing procedure involving a netball shooter. And therefore, one of your objectives or goals may be to increase their shooting success percentage by 5% within an eight-week period. It must be realistic. So there's no way a performer can increase by sort of 50 or 60% and above um, within eight weeks. So think very logically about what could be improved within eight weeks, especially if you're only doing one session a week. And therefore, it needs to re relate to the SMART goals principles, which you've learned this year. Finally, don't forget warm ups and cool downs when you talk about training sessions within your training program. And we'll come to that in a little while. Okay, so the training program itself, as I said, you're going to need a minimum of eight weeks and a minimum of one session per week. The training program is designed so that when you talk about it, you will be explaining or showing evidence that you understand the principles of training known as Mrs. Vop testing WC. You never need to define any of those, but through what you're showing us, it's very clear and evident that you understand the overload principle, the progression principle, a variety, etc., etc., by what practices you do explain. So do keep them in mind. Now, before I show you the next slide, it's really important to explain what's going to happen. So you're designing a development plan. It is not an action plan. An action plan is where you would state in week one, we'll start with a warm-up, and the warm-up will be this. And you'll go into detail about the warm-up. You'll then follow this with a skill drill. The skill drill will be this. We then might have a game at the end. The game will be this. We then might follow this with a cool-down, which will be... Th That's an action plan. You'll show me step by step by step by step what happens in week one. And then you might go to week two. Then you might go to week three. Then you might... That will be an action plan. What we want to do is develop a rough development plan. So, yes, we do need to discuss some parts of sessions to show your knowledge there but we don't need to go through all eight weeks showing head to toe as to what we're doing we just need to give a flavor as to some ideas which you want to do and so the best way to do this is to break the eight weeks down into three two-week sections now remembering your theory of periodization a microcycle can be up to three weeks. So we have three microcycles that, have, that you will need to think about. So you're going to create three microcycles. If you notice, in each microcycle, they have very common and similar things to cover. So the aim, what's the aim of, what do you want the athlete to achieve by the end of week two, or by the end of week four, or by the end of week eight? You must state that very clearly. You'll also need coaching points per microcycle. So for example, in microcycle one to two, this might, this might just be working on their skill, isolate the skill. So it might be the netball shooter, for example. The key coaching points of shooting would be, and you'll give me four clear coaching points. However, in microcycle week three to four, you might move on. You might actually be shooting whilst receiving a pass under pressure. So the key coaching points of that would be, and you'll give me four coaching points. And then when you get to seven to eight, the coaching points might be different because you might be working with the netballer aiming to develop their shooting within a game scenario. So it's slightly different. What I then want in each microcycle is what we call a sample session. So if you were doing a session within that microcycle, what might it look like? For example, in microcycle one to two in green, you might start at this point isolating the skill. So you might explain a little drill 
where you've got this, the, the netballer shooting around the D at different points, etc., etc. You then might progress by adding defenders, so adding pressure, make it a little bit more realistic. You then might develop that further by a sort of very, very small half-court game with small numbers, and that would be your sample session. That's all we need for microcycle one to two. You will need detail in these, and I'll come to that in a minute, but essentially that's what you're covering per microcycle. At the end of every microcycle, you'll see I've put it clearly in red, you must discuss very clearly how you would adapt the session if the performer is doing really well. So let's say you've got a really decent performer, they're flying through everything you're showing them, how would you make that harder for them for the practices that you've used? How would you adapt that? Or similarly, if they're struggling with anything, how could you make it slightly easier for them so they could still progress and develop that particular skill? So that's microcycle one to two. Three to four, you'll notice the same things to start with. So aim, coaching points, sample session. However, in three to four, what I'm looking for is advanced technique practice. So you might start the session that you're talking about with some form of pressure. So there might be defenders already there, or um, if you're an individual sport, it might be against the gun or with a timer, or it might be a time pressure or a physical pressure. So you might raise the height of the jumps in equestrian, for example. So you'd start at that point, then you'd move to something that was more realistic so we call that a game realistic situation so you but not a full one so we don't want if you're doing football 11 v 11 at this point we might have something like 7 v 7 so something smaller but realistic to a game or it might be a set play um, we call those phases of play so it might be oh from the sideline in basketball this is going to happen so you might work it out uh, without defenders then add defenders in slowly and then that becomes some sort of mini game so they're the sort of things that I want in microcycle three to four. Again, at the end, remember to discuss how to adapt if they're moving fast or slow. And then in microcycle seven to eight, this is known as the competitive uh, element of the training program. So again, aims, coaching points. This time the sample session might start with a quick recap of something you've done in microcycle three to four, but plenty of pressure and plenty of um, added speed or time or whatever you want to add on to that and then it might be full size game situations so again if you're looking at football it might be an 11 versus 9 situation it might be in basketball you do a 5 versus 4 situation and something's already occurred so it might be a breakout game or you, it's, it's, the game starts where somebody has missed the shot and you continue from that point at this part of the training program I'd also be looking at what are you doing with other things such as the crowd maybe adding media in think about the theories you've learned uh, this year in terms of psychology what other things would you add into that environment that would make it really realistic what do the performers do before they come out on court you might want to add something like that into the situation so they can practice and rehearse that so things like mental rehearsal so think about everything you would do in that sport and make it really realistic to the game. Again, finally, explain the adaptations of that particular phase as we've already discussed. That's quite a lot of work um, and we are here to help you with that as much as we can. But remember, you're really only designing a few sessions, not eight weeks worth of sessions. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Whenever you describe any one of those sessions within the different microcycles, these things that are coming up on screen will help you to gain marks. So what we're looking for is real detail specific things when you talk about your drills. So talk about distances. If you're setting up a practice, what's the distances involved in terms of meters or yards? How many numbers of players do you need? It's a really simple thing, but people forget that. How many times are they going to do it? Is there a rest period? Work relief ratios. How long is that rest period? Specific detail in the exercises. What or where is the ball coming from to start the game? 
what's going to happen? Is there a condition you've put on the game? So to gain points, does it progress logically? Are you starting with an individual, then adding a couple more players, then adding a couple more, or adding a time pressure? Does it progress nicely? Does it gradually build to something competitive? These things are really important. As I mentioned earlier on, don't forget your warm up and cool down per session. So you might want to briefly start with those before you start talking about the skill practice. You could also justify your warm up and cool down by saying why you need them. That will gain you more marks. So think about physiological reasons why we do a cool down as well as psychological. And then of course, do not forget how to adapt for better or weaker players with anything you discuss in your microcycles. Okay, that was quite a long screencast really covering that, but there's some quite important stuff there. So do take your time going back over it and make sure you understand what's required. If you need any help from me, you know where I am in the, in the P office. Thanks for watching. Um, and if you need any more help on the EP or anything else uh, on A-Level PE, please see more at the iSpeak PE channel on YouTube.